The graph view inside of Obsidian is a visualization tool that shows you all the connections that you've made between your notes. It was something that actually attracted me to Obsidian. I loved the idea of being able to see the network of information that I had curated. However, is this tool actually useful? Or is it all just a big gimmick? To get to the graph view inside of your Obsidian Vault, you just go over to the ribbon on the left-hand side and you click this little graph icon. And now I can see all the notes that have been created inside my vault and the connections between them. I don't have a lot of notes in this Obsidian for Beginners vault, so there's not a lot to see here, but you can see these lines that are going between the different notes so you can see these connections. And maybe with this vault being so small, you can see the triangulation of, of notes, of ideas, and maybe you can see how things may not be related directly, but but through the triangle, you can kind of see you know, Markdown cheat sheet might relate to another note in some way. However, as the notes inside of your vault grow, this diagram becomes bigger and more difficult to discern. Just to give you an idea of what it could look like when you have a lot of notes, I'm gonna open up my personal vault and we can see the graph view that I've got going in my personal vault. As you can see, I've got a lot of stuff going on here. And as we zoom in, you start to see all the titles of everything start to come into focus. It's difficult to figure out what it is that I am even looking at. Now, the nice thing is there are ways that you can filter these things down. So in order to do that, you can go ahead and click on this gear icon in the, on the right hand side. And we've got all these different options for filtering. So right now I've got tags turned on, so um, you can see these different tags. There are these uh, yellow nodes. You can see how things are being connected with those tags. So that might be a useful thing. I can turn those off, and that basically takes away one level of connections that I've got. I can also turn off attachments, so if I don't want to see the images that are attached to files, I can turn those off. I can also make it so that it will show existing files only. I have that on right now. If I turn that off, what that will do is if there's any backlinks that I've created to notes that don't exist yet, those will show up. So I'm actually going to keep that on because that actually helps to filter things down. Also, you can turn orphans off. So if there are things that have no connection to other notes, you can turn those off, and that, once again, narrows things down. I can also filter things uh, using different queries. The same queries that you can use in the search, I can use them here. So let's say I wanna search for things that have productivity in them. So that helps me to narrow it down if, I, if there's a certain topic that I want to kind of narrow in on. That does make it easier to be able to start to look at these and see, oh, okay, I'm starting to see the connections between things. As you can see, I've got a group set up here. Uh, anything with the tag sketchnote will be in this yellow color. So let's say, uh, let's turn tags back on. So anything with the sketchnote tag is going to have, is going to be colored this yellow color. And I can change the color of these groups. So let's say I wanted it to be blue instead. So now everything that is tagged with sketchnote, as you can see, they're all blue. And I can create different groups for things. So let's say I did want to group anything that said, had the word productivity, and I want to make these an orangey color. So now as I can see, oh, okay, so these are orange, so I can see those contain the word productivity. So there are ways to narrow things down, to group things, make it easier to see. Uh, let's go and look at some of the other display options. I can turn arrows on, so this will show the direction of the, no of the connections. So for instance, this Friday note, it points to this analog to digital tool workflow. It points to it, but it doesn't point back. And I can see that with these little arrows. I can make the nodes bigger if I wanted to. You can change the line thickness. So if you want those lines to be really, really visible, you can turn it all the way up. If you wanna see uh, the, the evolution of your vault, you can click this animate button. And now it'll actually animate the creation of all the notes that you have in your vault. Here I can change kind of how the forces work as I'm dragging things around. So I can kind of drag these and you can see that as I get smaller, the, the center force of gravity, I guess, gets less. And so now things are more spread out. 
So you can kind of play with those and it will give you a different spread of nodes by changing those values. If I want to reset everything that I've done, I just click this restore default settings button up here at the top. And now everything is back to the way it was when I initially opened the graph. So is this a useful tool? I haven't really answered that question. Uh, the thing is, is for me, it's not really that useful. I mostly have used it to find orphan notes. If there are things that don't have connections to other notes, I want to see those because I feel like if there's nothing that that note connects to, I start to question, is it really worth keeping that note? I don't want to have notes that are just kind of floating by themselves that don't really have any use. I think a good gauge of how useful a note is is if it's connecting to other ideas. Now just because I haven't found a lot of use out of the graph doesn't mean that you won't, so I encourage you to experiment with this. Play around with the settings and the filters. See if there are ways that you can see connections between ideas that you didn't see before. And if you do come up with cool ways to be able to use the graph, please add them in the comments below. I'd love to be able to figure out a way to use this tool better myself. This is part four in my Obsidian for Beginners series. If you missed any of the previous videos, go ahead and click on that playlist on your screen. And if you don't wanna miss any of the future videos in this series, please subscribe. Thank you so much, and I'll see you in the next one.